Good morning. So one of the things that I think is so beautiful about this moment is the way in which things that we've so often thought of as separate or unrelated continuously reveal their intricacy of connection, the way they're actually in an exchange and a conversation. This is true of poetry and science, literature and engineering, uh, the mind and the heart, self and the world. And the more attention we pay to this kind of connectivity that's wanting to reveal itself to us, the more opportunity we have for the flow of aliveness to come fully through us. And as we pay more attention to this, it draws us to a couple of things. One of them is the point at which things actually touch, the point where they interact, their meeting place. The second is about the quality of our questions because our questions send us on a journey. They have a trajectory all their own. And the third thing is about the quality of our attention. So whether we're talking about science or just looking at our own lived experience, we can notice that our awareness and our attention is our most valuable creative tool, that we follow wherever we're looking. And I would say also, and hopefully we can talk about this today, that we also could follow wherever we're listening. So, it's also a moment in our history where we really need every ounce of creativity that we have. And we need that creativity to come into a point where it's as potent as it can be so that our creative energy goes not only into developing new products and new technologies, but so that we can think together newly about what it is to be a human being, to help each other to know our value, and to work together to direct our attention in the best ways possible so that that aliveness is flowing freely. So uh, I've worked in a lot of different capacities in my life. In some ways, I've been a wanderer. Um, I've spent time as a research scientist. I've worked in a lot of different laboratories. I was really interested in the relationship between our perception and our experience, how our brain is working, what neuroscience is teaching us about what happens when we're thinking, what happens when we're learning, when we go to create. I've worked for hospitals and medical foundations thinking about what is actually the seed of growth, of healing, of health. And most recently, I've spent the last five years working in classrooms of all kinds with a really amazing team of people across many disciplines looking at the conditions for learning. And really, how we learn and how we think about learning is how we create, and it's how we think about creating. And so looking at what is the experience of learning how do we do it? Why do we do it? What can we learn about ourselves when we engage our process of creativity and learning? These are the questions that we're asking. And we're also looking at how do you actually measure learning in a way that reflects the truth of the experience and the possibility of the experience. So I'd like to invite you to think with me for a second about creativity. And to just spend a moment asking yourself, what comes to me when I hear the word? creativity, just for a moment. So most likely you're thinking right now, trying to find the right image. And usually it works one of two ways, that when you go to think about something like creativity, even when it's just a word spoken, you either struggle to find just one image to kind of pull it forward so you can see it, or you end up in a sea of images. And either way, it's great and perfect. But what happens to me most often when I try to do this process is that I end up in the swimming sea of, in, of images. And I'm trying to sort out all of these sort of potential ideas that I have about creativity, some that seem to reside over here and some that seem to reside over here. And before I know it, I'm also tangled in a stream of memory. And I'm remembering times when I felt really creative and it went well for me, and times when I didn't feel very creative and it was a struggle and I kind of tried to wrestle creativity to the ground. And I'm guessing that this is a similar experience for you. And there's actually science about it. So from neuroscience and brain imaging technology, you can see that when we go to imagine, to create, instead of looking out into the world, we most often start to look back. We actually look back into our own mind, into our memory, and we reactivate neurons and pathways that we've lit up before through experiences that we've already had. 
So we're trying to have an experience of a fresh moment of creativity, and yet we find ourselves kind of in this network that we've already traveled before. And the way that we learn, particularly in school, most often kind of reinforces this looping that goes on. So we measure creativity early and often, and even with the best of intentions, we create systems and rubrics and charts, and we try to categorize creativity and give it a scale on which to chart it. And we miss things when we do that, because actually we just kind of keep that looping activity in place. And maybe once in a while we kind of stumble into something else for a moment and there's this something that emerges, but it's not very often and it's not something that we can return to if we want to. And so if you're anything like me, in this looping pattern, the question starts to become, why am I not very creative? Why, with all this time that I spend imagining and working at it, don't I really come up with anything? And if you're like me, that leads into another series of questions which sounds something like, why don't I ever do this right? And don't other people do this better? And maybe I'm not very creative. And then the questions become, maybe I should just try something else, right? And so the quality of our questions in that way just leads us into a place where no matter what age we are, we don't feel connected to our creativity. We don't feel connected to our own self. And there's another direction that it could go. So we could ask a different question. From a question of, what am I not doing right? We could ask, how do I make my imagination creative and productive and for service? And when we ask that question, particularly about the component of service, it's like this love just flows through us that our creativity isn't just about our struggle that we have with ourselves. there's something else. And so it starts to unravel a different journey. And we start to look at, what is my contribution every day? And from spending time in classrooms and places of all varieties over a lot of years and just listening to myself, I feel like I can say that we care about that. We care about it every day, what is our contribution? We want to know that. We're looking at that. That's important to us. And so if we follow that out, then the question again is, how can I make my imagination creative, productive, for service? How can I find a different network to tap into? And so what I've learned in the last couple of years is that there actually is another network. And conveniently, it's already connected to your mind. And that is the network of your heart. And so the heart is the stuff of poetry. It always has been. And it's the stuff of science, which is so beautiful. So new science, emerging science, out of places like the Institute of Heart Math, which is right here in California, reaching all the way across the globe. People are looking at what is the conversation, what is the relationship going on in every moment between the brain and the heart? And how can that relationship help us with our sense of self and our creativity and our learning? And what's being discovered is that just as there are neurons in the, in the brain, there are about 40,000 sensory neurons in your heart and that your heart actually, far more than being a simple pump that's keeping you going moment by moment, is actually emitting these waves that are encoded with information that's influencing everything in your body and everything <coughs> about the space around you. So when your body is experiencing a steady and constant rhythm, what's some kind, sometimes called a coherent heart rhythm, it actually changes the way that your mind is working. And for a moment, you kind of drop out of those channels that have been run again and again, and there's a freshness that happens. There's a new clarity. You're able to kind of come to a point of greater stillness. So there's coherence. And we're learning from new measurements that it also happens between people. So there's resonance. So someone five, three feet away from me in that range, we would be sharing a heartbeat and as we're sharing these heart rhythms back and forth, it's influencing also the way that we're thinking, the way that we're relating, and the way that our creative energies can work together. So the steadier the heartbeat, the more creativity between people, and it gets even better, which is that we also know that we're sort of like antennas, that in every moment, actually, whether we realize it and tap into it or not, our rhythms are attuned to the rhythms of the earth and to the rhythms <coughs> of the biosphere. 
and that there's this great potential for us to synchronize with that and move in harmony with that, and that when we do that, our creativity is actually the creativity of the universe itself, of the earth, that all these rhythms begin to flow through us and to help us in what we're at, whatever we're creating. So in the heart, we find something new. We find the first cell of our being, the first herald of life, the first organ that forms, that there's this way in which energy and matter come together within us, and there's a pulse of life that begins as our heartbeat. And so instead of simply looking for the right image, we can also begin to be listening for the steadiness of our heartbeat and looking at what are the kind of images that come to us when that steadiness is present. So I'd like to ask you to think with me again in a different way and to spend just a moment just listening to your heartbeat. So like your attention, your heartbeat is a creative tool available to you in every moment. And it changes everything about your creativity. So even if you just spent 20 seconds listening to your heart before you went to write something or compose something or think through a research question or speak to a student, it would change something. It would make something else available. The cells in your being would begin to vibrate differently. And when we look around in nature, nature is always creating, in every moment, a new product, right? A branch, a flower, a fruit, it's always something new is popping up. There's an endless flow of creativity through nature. And so we can ask, how does that creativity become our creativity? So the poet Rumi says, make everything in you an ear, every atom of your being. Make everything in you an ear, so that the source can whisper to you and only you what's meant for you without anyone else's words or anything else but your heart. Right? So <laughs> we can synchronize with natural rhythms in every moment. We can find a flow that feels like the river that carries us. So in those moments where creativity is a struggle and you're like me, you want to wrestle it to the ground, or you have doubt so loud, you're sure you have nothing to contribute and nothing to create, you find the river and you listen to your heart. And so often when we're teaching and we're thinking about learning and creativity, it seems like there's so much work to do. And again, with the best of intentions, we create all kinds of ways to teach and learn and work together. And sometimes the best way of all is just to sit together, listening to the heart, and seeing what comes. So this is a poem from one of uh, third grade students in one of the programs that we run. And I love what she says about envisioning a whole universe and coming to this moment where life is glistening and everything is anew. And that creativity lives in that contact point where you and the universe meet and everything is anew. And on a day like that, you see artwork everywhere. And so it's my wish for you that you're able to spend a few moments with your heart, listening to it, and enjoying the value and the truth of your own creativity. Thank you.